Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorial series on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 24, and I'm going to discuss quotient rule 3. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So, in the previous video, it was number 23, I discussed quotient rule 2. And what we did was we took the divergence of the vector field made by the vector A divided by the scalar G. Now we're going to take the curl. So, to be honest, it's pretty straightforward, especially if you've done the product rules up to this, this point. If you haven't, well then, this might be new to you, but um, it, it's still pretty straightforward, in my opinion. So, what we're trying to do is take the curl of uh, A divided by G, the vector A divided by the scalar G. So, of course, it's a, a, we're taking the curl of a vector field. And how do we do this? Well, you can look at my video number 3, where I discussed how to take the, the, the cross product or the curl. But we're going to take the determinant of this particular 3x3 three three matrix. It's very straightforward. So in doing that, we're going to get a vector field again, of course. And our vector field is going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 components. I'd just like to draw your attention to this negative sign. That's where I like to put it, rather than inside here. So, yeah, that's that. Now, the question is this. How do we possibly simplify it? Well, what we need to notice for a start is that we're dealing with quotients. Because we have, for example, del del y of a sub z over g, and that's this term here. So we need to define, we need to, excuse me, apply our normal quotient rules in order to simplify this expression. So that means we're going to go from two, four, six up to twelve different uh, expressions, keeping, of course, the fact that they are i hat, j hat, and k hat, and that that's what we're going to get. Now. In dealing with the product rules, what I would have done is I would have ignored the j-hat and k-hat components and just uh, and shown by symmetry that if we solve for i, well, then we've automatically solved for j and k. But because this is so straightforward and th that there aren't that many terms, I think it's, it's okay to do it this way. So we're, we've now doubled the number of terms. We have, let's say, g times del a, del, del a sub z del y minus a sub z del g del y and so on in the i-hat direction, in the i-hat dimension. How do we possibly, how do we possibly uh, factorize this? Well, we do this the same way as we did in, in, in the quotient rule number two. We notice that for some of these, we have a pre-multiplication by g, a pre-multiplication by g. And another one here, another one here, here, and here. So we have two in the i, two in the j, two in the k. So what happens if we just group those together? If we group those together, we get the following. We get g times these, these terms here. Notice the i hat, j hat, and k hat components. And then in green here, I've added all the other components of these, which I've left out. And uh, by the way, sorry, and I should have said this, that these are all over g squared, because we're talking about quotients at this stage, right? So this, these, these are also all over g squared. But uh, I, just, I don't want to write it because there's so many terms. Um, OK, so we have these three terms and we'll say these three bracketed terms and these three bracketed terms. But if you look in the middle here, if you look at the bracketed terms which are pre-multiplied by g, if, if that's simply the curl of a. And if you don't believe me, on a separate sheet of paper, work out the curl of a and you'll see that it exactly what you, that's exactly what we have. And if you look on the right hand side, or it's not the right, the green side, what we have, actually have here is we, ha we have something similar, which I'll, I'll discuss in a moment. So, let us, just, let us just rewrite this. So, like I said, everything is over g squared. But I don't want to write in g squared because it just makes things too, uh, too nasty to look at. So, we have g pre-multiplied by the curl of a. At, uh, we'll say on the curl of a. And then we have these other terms. So, we have, we have we'll say, minus a sub z del g del y minus a sub y del g del z. And this is in the i hat direction, right? And there are of course other terms. Now you have to remember this that if you're talking about if you're talking about something that is a cross product or a curl, in the i hat direction you will have no x component. Um, sorry, we have no x component. In this i hat direction we have no x component. In actual fact it seems to me like we have the curl of g. So say del g del y del g del, del z seem to be the curl of g in the i hat direction. Okay, and if you look at the rest of the terms, it'll, it, there is similar symmetry. So, 
the case is, is uh, the, the result is that we have G, we have the curl of A, and this other term is plus A times the curl of the gradient of G, all of course divided by G squared, which for the first time I'm going to write in. And that's simply going to be the curl of the vector A divided by the scalar G. All right. So, um, yeah, that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also visit universityphysicstutorial.com.